Hello, everyone. So in this video, I want to talk about uh, real projective space. Uh, so in other words, I want to talk about RPM. Uh, my goals for this video is just try to explain and to show you uh, how we should think about RPN in a case when n is equal to 1 and 2. So probably first, uh, if you're going to talk about RPN, let me give you the, um, how to say, like the constructive definition. So let me show you how the RPN is actually uh, built. And I'm going to show you based, based on the example uh, when n is equal to 1. So in the case when n is equal to one, uh, what do you have uh, to build the RPN? I'm going to start that I'm going to take uh, R2 without the origin. So in other words, I'm going to take, uh, this is my R2 and I'm going to subtract zero. So in other words, what I'm going to have, I'm going to have like this plane over here and minus a point. Okay. And then what I'm going to do with this plane, uh, if I'm going to take a plane without a point, uh, I can consider like different lines. And I'm going to indicate these lines like with this orange color. So it's going to be my line L1. And this is going to be my L2. So um, probably I can uh, give you like two constructive definitions. And then I'm going to show you how one definition is related to the other. So the first definition that, uh, let me put it over here, uh, RP1 uh, is the set of lines that goes through the origin uh, in R2. through zero in R2. Okay, uh, so this is like more geometric and like definition. So uh, real projective space is just a set of lines. But there is another approach how we can define it. Uh, and the way we, how we're going to define, we're going to take R2 without the origin and we're going to take equivalent class of our points. So, uh, and what is going to be our equivalence class in that case? For the equivalence class, I'm going. I'm saying that if I will take like two points, let's say point A and point A prime, then A is going to be equivalent to A prime, if and only if uh, I can find some constant. Uh, there exists some constant lambda which is non-zero, such that A uh, is equal to lambda A prime. So. And right now you can see how the first definition is related to the other. So for example, for example, I'm going to take this point like A, yes? And you can see if I'm going to take my point A and just multiply this point A by any lambda, which is non zero, then what I'm going to get, I'm going to obtain exactly this line over here. Because if I want to uh, obtain this part of the line, I'm going to multiply by lambda, which is positive. If I want to obtain this part of the line over here, I'm going to multiply by the lambda, which is negative. So basically the equivalence class of, uh, in this case, is going to be just the line in R2. So that's why I can say that uh, RP1 is uh, equal to R2 without the origin quotient uh, the equivalence class. So uh, this is like the algebraic definition, but how, what is it like the way, how we can visualize actual RP1? And here, uh, this circle is going to be our friend. So basically the idea, let's take again, uh, the R2 without the origin. So I'm going to throw the origin and let's see uh, like the set of the lines that goes to this origin, yes. And right now what we're going, to do every time when you have a line, uh, let me write down over here. Every time when you have line, this line gives you what? Gives you slope. Yes. So in other words, if you're going to think about RP1 in the space, then the points of your space are going to be lines. 
and but each line over here is going to be represented by this angle theta. So in other words, uh, if you're gonna if we're going to think uh, through uh, this perspective, in my my equivalence class is giving as a, a point which lies in the same line. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to choose as a unit circle, or in other words, I'm going to take uh, a representative from the each element over here. Do you see? But actually, uh, I'm going to take not one representative, I'm going to take two representatives, because if I'm going to take like this equivalence class, then unit circle is going to intersect my equivalence class at these two points. Uh, let's call this point uh, A and A prime. And we know that these two points are related because if the line is in a unit circle, you can multiply A by, um, not by negative one, but you basically you can see that you can, ah, yeah, by negative one, I think, yeah. Uh, let me check, uh, let me think for a second. If I will take the point, multiply, yeah. So you can see that A is equal negative one times A prime because the little side lies on the opposite side of the circle. So basically to get P1 right now, what I need to do, I just need to glue those two points. So what I'm going to have right now, is, uh, I start with a circle where uh, diametrically opposite points lies in the same equivalence class, yes? So what, as a step number one, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take these two points over here and glue them together. And what I'm going to obtain, I'm going to obtain this shape uh, like that looks number eight. Okay, but then what is going to happen? Then only one, only like two points which lies in the same equivalence class got glued, but all other points, we still need to glue them. And what is going to happen? If I'm going to start moving in this direction here, let's call it like direction, I don't know, like one, then all these points must be glued to the points over here. So in other words, you can imagine that you have this number eight and you in some sense are going to wrap around this number eight over itself. Or in other words, if I'm not a good drawer, so let me try to show, uh, if you will just deform your eight something like this, uh, let me see, uh, this is my blue line. Yes. And then on the top, I'm going to put, so yeah. So what I did, like I took my number eight, I rotate by pi over two and put on the top. And you can see right now what we're going to get. We're going to get uh, something like this. And after that, I'm going to take this uh, top part and just start gluing um, over itself. and. If I'm going to glue that, you can see I'm going to get a circle itself. And right now, uh, what I got, like I start with a unit circle where up diametrically opposite points lies in the same equivalence class and I glue them again because uh, RP1 consists um, of, if, so like you cannot have like two representatives basically. So you just need to have one representative. But if you're going to do this gluing, you're going to get S1. Uh, so as a like result solution, not like solution is a final answer. Uh, through this topological uh, like intuition picture, we just show and uh, that RP one is actually is going to be uh, diffeomorphic to S one. So in other words, real projective space uh, in the case when n is equal to one is going to be just a unit circle. Okay, guys, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, next time I'm going to talk about RP2. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know, let me know if you have any questions. Please subscribe to the channel. Tell other people about this channel. I'm trying to grow and I'm going to upload more videos. And let me know if you have any questions and bye-bye.